What's up, everybody? I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis, and this is Snacks, where we talk about some personal stuff, some soccer stuff, some real stuff, and some fun stuff. So, Lynn, what's new since the last pod? What's not new? Well, first of all, I am in Portland right now. I flew straight here from camp. That's why I don't have all my equipment. Um, So hopefully this sounds great. Um, But yeah, we were in camp. Um, Carly, we're celebrating Carly and Lindsay and the Victory Tour and all of the celebrations. Yeah, we had a very busy and fun camp. So let's start at the beginning, I guess, with (laughs) training. And then with Lindsay's 100th cap in Kansas City, it was so much fun. I know. It was like so, the whole thing was so sweet. Um, Usually when somebody reaches 100 caps, you come together in the meeting room before, um, or right after we have our team meeting about the game. And people stand up there and talk about the person. Um, And it was just so sweet. Everybody said such nice things about Lindsay. Um, Carly, like, gave her her number, which was, like, I think got everybody crying in the room. Yeah. Did you cry? I I mean, I was so unlike me, bawling (laughs) uncontrollably. It was so cute and fun to celebrate Lindsay. And I feel like Lindsay and I have, like, been on this team for a while together and, like, both play midfield. So we've had times where, like, we're fighting for the same spot. And I think... I have so much respect for her because she really makes me have to be my best. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is something that Rose and I have actually talked about a lot, that it's really cool and unique to have so much respect for the other midfielders because it really does just make us um, not only feel like we are all fighting for the same thing and like trying to help the team win and just create this like really um, like great midfield, but it just as an individual, it really makes you like, do that extra work and prepare the best you can because you know that it's it's not going to be easy to break into that lineup when there's such other talented players there. So I was just so happy and, and proud of Lindsay in that moment because it's like such a cool milestone that not everybody gets to do. I feel like it's one of the things that um, it, when you first get on the team and you're like slowly accumulating caps, it's like, wow, that is so far away. And the longer you're around, you're like, this really is such a huge accomplishment mm-hmm. and probably one of the times where you're kind of looking around like oh my god did I, am I like really on the team did I really get here um so I was so proud of Lindsay and excited for her and I think it was just really inspiring for everybody to see her reach that milestone yeah I would say the same thing I think that what's so cool is that um it seems like the midfield has like a like a team within the team almost like this like really special bond because like you said everybody is fighting for that spot and um Obviously, there's only you can only play three midfielders at a time unless we, I don't know, change formations. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like you guys are fighting, but at the same time, you guys support each other so much. Um, it's actually really cool to see. Um, and you guys are also around the same age. So to be able to, like, go through this journey and um, walk through this experience together, like the good times, the bad times, um, I just think it was like really, it was such a nice celebration. I know it really was the, I posted a picture on Instagram with Lindsay where um, we're just hugging after a game. But the reason that that picture was so special is because it was after the semifinal of the world cup after the England game. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay and I had been kind of sharing time in the world cup and um, before the world cup. And it was this moment where, obviously like you just said like there's only three midfield spots and in that game I had started a few games before that and then Lindsay was starting that game and I think for both of us to just realize that winning was going to be so much more important than whoever was playing and Mm -hmm. that moment that we were hugging I was just like I didn't say this but I think we had this kind of like unspoken understanding of like I don't, I love you and I trust you out there. So you're doing it. And if I get to go, I'm doing it. And we're the only reason we're here is to help the team win. And we're just going to share the role and like do it together. And like, 
whoever gets to play is going to get the job done. And we both just like, even though we didn't talk about it, I know that we both just felt that in the moment. So it was, I mean, it was really cool. I was really happy for her and proud of her. And I just think that having experiences like that with teammates makes these milestones mean so much to everybody because you just know what everybody's been through to get to that point. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and then, like I said, at the very end, to see Carly um, give her the number 10, I think that obviously it's just a number, but it's not. Like, pe- we have known how long Lindsay has wanted that number 10, and Carly <laughs> said a speech about how long she had to wait for the number 10. Um, and sometimes when numbers open up, you just, like, are trying to grasp at anything. Like, when you're first on the team, you're just like, I'll take anything. Whatever <laughs> whatever you want to give me, I'll take Um and I think it's very rare that a number actually gets to be passed down to somebody mm-hmm. um, because sometimes it's like, oh, that person retired and like, this is the only numbers open. Take it. Um, yeah. So I thought that was like a really special and cool moment um, for that to happen. I, that definitely is like the one thing that made me cry. Oh, my gosh. I know. And then just yeah. even as soon as Lindsay's 100th cap was over, all the attention just kind of shifted to Carly and mm-hmm. um, seeing her share and give her number to Lindsay was just this really cool like passing of the torch kind of like Carly has to trust her and trust all of us to kind of like pick up these pieces and like that she has always carried so I felt um actually this kind of like responsibility with Carly leaving that all of us kind of have to fill that role that she's gonna leave behind and try to bring little pieces of Carly isms along with us as we go. Um, Obviously it's like a hole that nobody could ever fill on their own, but I hope that she's taught us enough that we could kind of fill in all together. But celebrating her was just so much fun. Like the game was so much fun. The talking before the game was so much fun. Seeing videos all over social media, like celebrating her, highlighting all of her accomplishments was like just so awesome and cool to be a part of. I know everybody keeps saying like it's an end of an era, but I'm like, I feel like it's an end of three eras. Like she's like the the only one who's been here for like so long. And I think we've talked about this before on a podcast, but like we only know like a very small portion of her career. And so when Mm -hmm. we watch the videos, I'm like, you have just been here for so long. And like, we know that in the short time that we've been around with this team, like how hard it is. And so to know that she has done it for 17 years is just like, it's like mind blowing. I know. It's like so insane. 316 caps. I know. That's like so many. (laughs) It was so awesome seeing her go through it and seeing her family there. Like, Mm -hmm. I think we all had tears in our eyes when she was getting honored right before the game out of the field to just see her out there with her family and how that's kind of come full circle for her. So um, I also just felt, go ahead and make this about me again. Um, (laughs) I also just felt like, because I'm still rehabbing, um, to be in camp. And of course, anytime coming into camp is a huge honor. It's like, obviously so much fun to see my friends and like be just in the environment with everybody. But to have such inspiring things like going on while I was there, I think was actually like really needed for me at the time that I'm at and just this motivation to get back. And Mm -hmm. um, obviously I wanna like be back out there with everybody, but to see people reaching these kind of milestones and getting celebrated was um, just this like awesome coming together that made me wanna get back out there like even more. So I actually feel really lucky that I got to be in camp and got to like witness those things. Sammy. I'm happy for you. Yeah. It's, it is so funny, though, that how, like, injuries make you miss the game so much. Like, I think sometimes we take it for granted, um, like, what we're doing, how far we've made it, the fact that we just get to play this sport that we love so much. And so when we are injured, you're like, crap, like, I actually really do love this. Um, and so, because I... We've talked about this too, like when you're playing and when you're like in the thick of season, sometimes you're just like, all I need is a vacation. All Mm -hmm. I need is a vacation. And then you get on vacation and you're like, all I need to do is sprint around. Yeah. And so when you're like (laughs) injured, you're like, I can't do either of those things. So it's, it's, I'm happy that you got that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Well, thank you. Um, And then we had this awesome party for Carly. Yeah. Whatever night, Tuesday night, the PA um our executive director becca and um 
I don't know her title, but Annie, they did such, such an awesome job. job organizing. The DJ was killing it. The, the songs that he was playing awesome. were so good. So good. I was like, yeah. Classic. Moving and grooving. It was so much fun. Moving and grooving. I had an I had an absolute blast at the at Carly's party. So Oh, it was so fun. It was like I think what everybody needed to just like let loose a bit, but be yeah. in our own little like bubble and just yeah. cel- celebrate. Carly exactly. looks like she was having a blast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Another side where we don't literally get to see. Everybody was having a blast. Like everybody like the staff was having a blast we like all legit were having a blast if anybody did not have a blast at that party don't ever tell me because i have just visions of everybody just absolutely enjoying themselves it was awesome and then also another cool experience that we got to do was go to the rolling stones i'm wearing my rolling stones t-shirt you can't see because it's a podcast but i got this for marley and i like now it's mine (laughs) But that was so cool. Like, he, Mick Jagger is 78 years old and running on stage. Running and jumping around running. on that stage. I was like, dude, this guy has better mobility than me. Yeah, he's got they, those good like, knees. They, like, rocked. They legit rocked. Like, I was also moving and grooving at that concert. Like, they were yeah. so good. They were so good. I think I only knew two songs, but, like, those were – the whole thing was great. I had a great time. It was, it was really, really fun. That also was such a great time. And Lynn, another great time is you also scored a goal in the game, and it was such a nice, beautiful goal. Thank you. I did score a goal. That did happen. Um, yeah, that was cool. I mean, Tobin got the ball and was so patient, and then in natural Tobin fashion made her defender fall down, and I was like, well, now there's a giant yeah. hole right for me to run through. And run through you did. And run through I did, and then I just calmly passed it into the goal. So yeah, unlikely. it was awesome. <laughs> Just kidding. Stop. <laughs> um, okay, a couple other random tidbits here. We were in Minneapolis walking to coffee with Christy, and the girl so calmly walked right by us and goes, I love snacks. And we were just like, oh, yeah. my God, thank you so much. She was so calm and just said it, and I, both yeah. of us were in shock. We were like, oh, my God, I feel so seen. <laughs> It was like very chill of her like it wasn't like like she yeah. wasn't like nervous to talk to us at all which was just like so it was like kind of unexpected and like so awesome and then she just kept walking and yeah like, she just like she just Bye. did it in passing like she she did it so nonchalantly that I was like you are so much cooler than us I know because then we obviously were like oh my god thank you <laughs> she's like uh-huh yes. I'm gonna keep walking I yeah, mean I we don't... we were in our United States everything because it was so cold. Yeah. So we yeah. we weren't incognito at all. But it was very cool to hear a just from a, a random person walking by us on the street that they listened to the podcast. It was like really okay. We're cool. We're, We're doing podcasters. Thinking. We are podcast podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> we are podcasters. I think about that all the time. I'm like, I have a podcast. And now we yeah. have shirts. And yeah. beanies. Yeah. What the Which, heck? You still, you still have mine. Y- yeah, I do. I'm yeah. holding that hostage for sure. Yeah. I've gotten yeah. so many compliments on it. I wore it at camp and everybody was like, oh my gosh, I like your shirt. And then other people were like, what does snacks mean? And I was like, this is sparking great conversation. Yeah. Because if you didn't know about the podcast before the shirt, now you know. Now you do. And okay, I'm going to do one of my speaking of clothes. Oh, yeah. Tell the I people. Tell the people. Had, I had the most successful fashion upgrade where I asked all of my friends. I put a bunch of stuff in my cart for Maritzia and Free People, and then I showed my friends, and I said, do you guys approve? What do you think? What should I add? What should I take out? Are you guys on board with these outfits? And I got some feedback from my girls, including Lynn, Abby, Christy, Pino, if I'm forgetting somebody, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I and I ordered my outfits and I just tried on outfit number one. Literally, I looked so good. I was parading around my house, so happy and thrilled with my choices and my feedback from my friends. Okay, so what came? The pants? This those cool pants, they're like plaid and mm-hmm. like high waisted and like could be dressy, also could be super cash. Yeah. And this cute little like crop 
cardigan situation with like I just wore nothing underneath. Hot little high waisted pants. Literally ten out of ten. Maybe. Yeah, that's that's like for sure your like body type fit. Yeah. Yeah. Slacks. <laughs> Sophisticated. Don't know what shoes, but uh, we'll work on it. You can we'll you can either it. have like little white sneakers to make mm. it casual or mm. like we talked about like loafers boots loafs oh yeah the loafs have not come yet did you order them i did sick and then you yeah. can pair it with a nice bag oh yeah all right i'm a coat, i am so we're going here for into that. winter cozy season i am so here for that yeah cozy i need to season. i need to like order clothes but i have nowhere to go so well nor do i okay well that's our update um we basically were just at camp the whole time and uh we had a good time we celebrated carly we celebrated yeah. Lindsay. we went to the rolling stones i don't know if we're ever going to get to see the rolling stones ever again it was awesome yeah. i feel like it was, it was awesome. a once in a lifetime opportunity also who knew that my first concert back in two years would be the rolling stones all right, we had a chance to chat with someone Sam knows pretty well, her sister, Christy. <laughs> we talked about some awkward sleep arrangements at the Olympics, long distance dating. Um, it's not just me in fashion. What does that mean? Long distance dating. It's not just me in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> So you, just so you guys know if they're going to keep this in, our producer writes sometimes these little, like, uh, transitions for us. And Lynn, like, obviously didn't read that one before she said it out loud, so she didn't get it. But this happens all the time. Okay. So that got Anyways. weird. <laughs> Let me try again. Um, we talked about some awkward sleep arrangements at the Olympics. You know what? We're just going to leave it. Anyways. Three, two, one, close your eyes. Okay. Sam! We did it at the same time. Wait, Lynn, were you first or was that me and you? I was first. But like, yeah, how are we supposed to know? All I can hear is myself. Exactly. That's the game. Well, I counted one, two, three, clap. Oh. What did you guys one, do? One, Sam? One, I just waited a random amount of time and I imagined that we were all going like this. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to try one want to try one more time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, close your eyes. That was no. terrible. Yeah, okay, let's start. <laughs> All right, so we'd like to bring on this week's guest of the Houston Dash and the U.S. Women's National Team. Please welcome Christy Crachita Mewis. <laughs> welcome Hi. to the show. Christy, we give you a, we gave you a new nickname last camp. Do you want to share what it was? Oh, my God. Is that allowed to say? Yeah, you can say whatever you want on here. <laughs> it's PG-13. Yes. Um, I don't know who came up with it, but instead of Crochita, it is now Crotch or, or Crotchita. So now everyone thinks it's so funny and they just yell Crotch like across the locker room, across the fields. <laughs> it's like so inappropriate. And then uh, even the other day in like in Rondos or whatever, we were doing just like 5v2s or something. And Abby was like, I want to be on Crotch's team. <laughs> and I was like... Crochita okay, was bad enough. <laughs> I know. Crochita was think, bad enough, but I think my favorite part about it, especially with like that group of people, is when you get annoyed about something, everybody just like doubles down. So like as soon as you were like, oh guys, come on, crotch, we were all just like crotch. Yeah, yeah and now like stuck. now like none of you guys are like ever gonna stop doing it because it's like so gross and annoying to me. <laughs> I know. You, you should have pretended yeah. to love it. You should have you didn't like you should have not shown weakness. But I think I feel like I like try like at f I think it was like the like everyone spotted the initial annoyance and that's where I made my mistake. Like I I was like, oh, <laughs> and then right when everyone saw me do that face and then I was like, no, like I have to just like pretend I like it. So they stop saying it. But they everyone saw like my initial reaction, which is where I made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> you made an error for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. OK, so we wanted to start off by talking about the Olympics. And the fact that you guys are one of a few siblings to ever go to the Olympics together. 
I was just talking to mom and dad and I had sent them the picture of us together with the bronze medals and they were like, oh yeah, we were going to get it framed, but like, do you guys maybe have a better one? (laughs) And I was like, no, like it was a dark time. Like we, we were tired and hungover and sweaty (laughs) and we just like probably, you're probably not going to find a better picture than that because we both are just like this. (laughs) <laughs> I know. And then Pino, Pino has like the lives. Like, remember she sent us the yeah. lives of those pictures and Sam was literally like slapping me in the back and like grabbing my neck. And she's like, you're going to regret this. We need to get smile. a picture together. <laughs> smile, smile. You're going to regret this if we don't get a she picture. she was going like this. <laughs> <laughs> like such a little brat. I was, I was just so hung over though. Like I couldn't manage to take a picture. Like I couldn't, nothing sounded worse to me at that time because we had just been standing up on the podium yeah. for so long and all of us were sweating. But like, Sam, those pictures are pretty pathetic. They're heinous. They I don't are... think either of us posted one, even though it's like such an amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, it was like we had to sit and watch the gold medal match be played, which was like yeah, it was tough. sad. And then it was like the longest match ever. <laughs> And then we stood up there, but we also were so hungover. So it was just like an added, like, wow, the last thing I want to do is stand here and take a picture. As the the lady was yelling at us to get off the stage. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And we were just like, can we just have one minute? Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I, I feel so, I feel so spoiled, like saying how miserable it was because obviously like we were on a podium getting an Olympic yeah. medal, but like we were all just in such a bad, bad way. Like what was it like 1am in the morning? Like it was just ridiculous. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, it was tough. Speaking yeah. of your guys' parents though, um, I really think that the listeners would love to um, have you guys recap the um, send off video that they sent you guys. Um, anybody anybody want to take over tell the story Christy don't look embarrassed I'll set the scene and then Christy talk about the uh, the video we were at the send off games in Hartford and because of COVID like obviously US soccer was planning that we wouldn't be able to see our families the whole time we were away so they arranged to have the families send in some like videos to get us excited to go and for videos for when we were there so we were at the like send off dinner and Our parents weren't there because there were like some COVID protocols everybody had to go through and we had a lot of family coming to the game. So they just wanted to kind of only deal with part of it and were hanging out with a bunch of other people not at the send off dinner. But of course they had sent in a video. So the video is now playing on this big screen in front of all the players and some of the players' families. Christy, take over. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I I honestly think I blacked out for part of it. So, like, you're probably going to have to tell most of the story. But, like, they just came up with this skit. 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 <laughs> and, like, I don't know how long it took them to perfect it. Did they say that it took a long time? Well, just before you're too harsh, keep in mind, mom and dad are probably going to listen to this. Yeah. Mom and dad, we loved it. It was hilarious. We're just we're just having a little laugh. No, we yeah. <laughs> they I think they told me that they like did it in one take. That's no. amazing. That is amazing. No. They came up with a skit. It was something like, "Hey Bob, do you know how long the flight is to Tokyo?" And then my dad said like some absurd amount of miles and then they were just going back and forth acting on the screen and about like our travel and wishing us luck. And obviously everybody loved it. Like people were dying laughing and like it was so cute and so our parents and really genuinely like funny and sweet. But me and Christy were just like, oh, I was like squishing my face like into Sam's armpit, like just trying to escape. (laughs) But of course, like it was like so cute what they did, like, of course. But at the time I was just like oh my God, oh my God, they're doing a skit, they're doing a skit. Like, I was just, like, losing my mind. But, like... It was, like... Yeah, like, my, was, like <laughs> everybody else's parents just... Not everybody's, but for the most part, people were just like, good luck, we wish we could be there. Yeah. Have a great time, we love you. <laughs> and then the next video up is your parents doing a skit. <laughs> But it was, like, so funny. Like, of course, like, and then that kind of became, like, such a thing at the Olympics where we would, like, joke about it. And it, like, became this this oh, yeah. thing. And, like, everyone did, everyone loved it. When she did this, <laughs> <laughs> my mom On did this screen. video. 
and we were like, what is, <laughs> what, what is that? What is that? It, Where did that come it from, It felt Mom? right. It felt right, so she did it. That. But yeah, she's just, our parents are just too sweet. Yeah. It was, it was was very sweet. It was, it was epic. And look, we're still telling the story months later. So yeah. Props. Yeah. Um, Love you, mom. Love you, dad. (laughs) (laughs) Another, Um, another thing that I think we should talk about is that when you were at the Olympics, um, there was a, so we got our, we didn't stay in the village, um, because normally with soccer, like you're, the games start, or we start before the games start, um, and then usually when not COVID times, we play away from the host city. And then we got clo- when you get closer to the host city, before we got on the team, they would stay in the village, but then I guess it became a distraction. So anyways, that's irrelevant. We didn't stay in the village. <laughs> that, that is irrelevant, but I just, I told you the story anyways, but that's irrelevant. Exactly. She's just giving deep background. <laughs> anyways, we didn't stay in the village. We had our own rooms, except when we had to go to whatever city we were in and you guys got to room together. Oh my and now God, take yes. take over, Christy. Take over now. Oh my God. So like, well, there's like two, I think there was like two separate issues, two different nights. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what story she's going to tell. She doesn't have our notes, but oh I'm so God. excited to see what it is. Go. Okay. Well, like the first night it was like, <laughs> we, I mean, we've been staying like in our own, like everyone's had their own space and like, yes, she's my sister, but we still felt weird, like sleeping next. I think like we both just had this like subconscious, like feeling of like sleeping next to someone because obviously the beds are like this close to each other. And like, we were both just kind of like out of whack. Like, I don't really know. Like we, so we couldn't fall asleep. We were like in and out. Like we probably didn't like actually get to sleep until like two o'clock that night, but just because it was like. I don't know what was wrong with us. Like, we just yeah. couldn't, like, we figure just, like, it out. Sudden- we just, like, suddenly were sharing a room. So I was like, don't breathe and don't yes. move around in your sheets. But it, but it was also, so like, I laid why? there. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, why did we feel like that? Like, I would think other people would f- feel like that. Because I know. it was just, like, their teammate yeah, or, like, their friend. Yeah. But, like, even me, I was, like, I was still just kind of, like, oh, my God, there's, like, another human in here. Like, it was, like, yeah. weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we both we both fall asleep with our iPads like to help us fall asleep and neither of us did it. Out of the blue, we just like screwed up our sleeping routine and just didn't fall asleep with our iPads because I didn't want to like disturb her. So you guys were both just like awake laying in yeah. the dark until 2 a.m. Just for like hours. Completely not, abandoned everything that we normally do. But like, like we were not just like talking. You guys were not talking. <laughs> no. <laughs> but then, Christy, so then, like, I think I, like, got up to go to the bathroom because I was, like, so frustrated. Like, I was just so frustrated with everything. I was, like, I'm hot. Like, there's someone else in this room. Like, I need to just go to the bathroom, come back, and, like, reset. And I go, and I, like, sit down in bed. And she's, like, hi. <laughs> and, I, and she was, like, are you having an okay time? <laughs> like, I think, I think she must have been, like, half asleep or something. But, like who just she like attacked me (laughs) she literally attacked me attacked me are you having an okay time and that's exactly how she said it that's how loud she said it at two o'clock in the morning (laughs) she must have i was i was half asleep but i but i wasn't i hadn't been sleeping yet so in my head i was like ask her if she's sleeping But then if she had been sleeping, I didn't want to, like, put it in her head that I wasn't sleeping. So I just go, are you having an okay time? And she goes, yeah, I'm fine. And I was like, and you said, and I said, are you? And you were like, yeah. And then we just ignored it. We just ignored it. That she screamed at me in the middle of the night, are you having an okay time? <laughs> so then we like told this whole story at breakfast and everybody was like, what? <laughs> oh, I just blew a start. <laughs> I just it couldn't get so over. It was so weird. Yeah, like the aggression that you like set it in. Like, oh, and okay. Then- and then the it's, second night, or this might have yeah. been a different night. So there were like in Japan, there were like little. I guess there's like a lot of like little mini earthquakes there. Oh yeah. And 
Do you remember that? Yeah. So like yes. there was like one night there was like how many? Like three or four of them? Or like it one or like two four. of them? It was like four of them. Like yeah. Back to back to back. Yeah. Um, but then Sam, what actually happened that night? Oh yeah, you were like <laughs> What did I say? It was like one. I don't remember. I think you just said like so everything like kind of shakes. It's like so subtle though. Like it's like so, yeah. so subtle. Like it's- So re- you just wake up to like your bed moving a little. Yeah, but it, it's it's like like a like a truck drives by or something. Like it's not like a big shake at all. It's like so subtle. And Sam was like, Christy? <laughs> and she was like, can you, what did you say? You were like, can you feel that? Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that an earthquake? <laughs> And I'm, like, notorious for, like, waking up with, like, night terrors and, like, freaking Pat out. And, like, yeah. I'll wake up and I'll go, Pat! And I'll just be, like, you'll have to, like, calm me down and be, like, Sam, nothing's happening. Like, every- this is, like, without earthquake. So then there's an earthquake and obviously I just freaked out and went, Christy! <laughs> what did so, you yeah, do, Christy? The- like, what did you do to that? Were you just, like, shut up? I, no, I think I was like, cause I could tell, I could like sense like the worry, like in her voice. So I was like, it's okay. It's okay. I feel it. It's okay. It's okay. And she was like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. She's just like, she just like is so loud. I mean, just like, like sleeping anxious. Yeah. Just like yeah. always waking up to something that like, you're going to like get like something's wrong. Like always. It, in her defense, those earthquakes were scary. Like what were we supposed they were. to do? No, like, yeah, they were. Yeah, it was um, scary. And that the the thing had just happened in Florida where like yeah. the building collapsed. So like I was just ner- I think just sleeping on edge. I was nervous. Yeah, it was. But everyone felt them, and it's like so yeah. normal. But it's just like the way I think you just like automatically like when you get woken up by something, you're just like automatically like on edge. Yeah, Pan- <laughs> panic mode. Yeah, like you don't you don't wake up calm, Sam. Like you're just like. <laughs> totally yeah all right well we uh that was a great intro honestly i i don't know how we could possibly move on to more serious stuff but it looks like we're gonna have to that was an intro um, yeah. that was the intro what do you isn't it fun we gotta move on that thing? was just like getting to know you oh we even Welcome had to cross to off some stuff mm. yeah all right hit me <laughs> so i know you guys you have talked about this a lot but um when you were coming back from injury um, and getting back onto the national team, like what were some things that you had to change mentally um, to like allow yourself to get back there? Um, yeah, I mean, I obviously like have talked about this so much, but like I think it is like a really good like I do think that like what I went through and like the message that I have it could actually like I do think that there's like a lot of like people who like will reach out to me about, and I'm sure like a lot of people who tore their ACL, like they get messages too and stuff, but a lot of people reach out to me about like, oh, like you're, you know, like you're an inspiration. Like I just tore my ACL for like the second time. Like I'm trying to like, or just things like that. So they do like come to me about it. Just like, and when I say come to me, like DM me on Instagram or something. Um, but I do think that like what I went through, like could really help other people you know, like young kids who are going through the same thing. Like I just, I remember just like doing my knee and I was like, it was, again, I've said this so many times, but it was just like a wake up call for me. Like there was so much left that I wanted to accomplish, like so much that I still like wanted to do. I wanted to get back on the national team. I was just like, I like had to like face my fears because it's obviously scary admitting like what you want sometimes, um, like what you truly want. And I wanted to get back on the national team. I wanted to be like, oh, I wanted to be a world-class midfielder. I wanted to like be one of the best midfielders in the league. Like those were just all my goals. And I think I was ignoring them for a long time. So I think that when I did my knee, I was like, I almost kind of tried to see it as like a fresh start. Like I'm going to come back like better, stronger, faster, um, you know, wiser. Like I just wanted all of those things for myself. So I just was so motivated and so determined and I knew that like I just had to get back on the national team because that was obviously like my ultimate goal. Um, so I just kind of like did everything that I could and I I think I did come back obviously better than I was before. But it was just, it, it, it was honestly like one of the hardest times I've ever been through in my life because it is difficult getting a serious injury and then trying to come back and be the player that you were before. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was definitely hard and it was draining and it was emotional. And obviously I was lucky enough to like have Sam with me through the whole thing because she was doing all of the things that I wanted to do. Like she was going to a major tournament. She was with the national team. She was like a consistent, um, like starter and like success on the national team. And I just like wanted all of that. So it was good to like kind of have her, um, you know, with me and like talk me through it. Like there was days where I would call her crying. Like, I can't do this anymore. Like it's, I'm, I'm not going to get there. And she was always there for me, pushing me and stuff like that. So, um, I think it was definitely like a mental switch and you kind of just have to like be a psycho about it. Like you have to be a, like, I was just like a psycho. Like I was crazy. I was, I was just like, I'm not like, I will not stop for anything. Like I'm getting back on that national team. And I think like, I was just a crazy person and a psycho and I, I did it. <laughs> you, you did it. All right. I, yeah. I think everybody has to be a little bit psychotic to be on the team because like there's so much sacrifice that you have to give up, um, to like get there. But something that I thought was interesting that you said was just like the ability to say out loud or, or acknowledge what you want. Um, because you like, like you said, it is scary. It, it's scary to admit that you want something because the possibility of not getting it. And so yeah, exactly. I, I like to call it self-sabotage because I do that sometimes too. But like, I think that that's where it starts is like the ability to say like, no, this is what I want and I'm going to do anything to get that. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to still not get it. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, but Sam, I feel like you're like good at like you you're not like that. So like you would sometimes tell me a hard truth like that I wouldn't even admit. Like sometimes I would call you and you'd be like, "Yeah, but you want to get back on the national team." So like what like what do you mean? Like you would like tell me truths and I was like, "Oh my god, she's right. Like why can't I just admit that to myself?" But it's the hardest thing to admit something that you want if, with the chance that you could fail. Exactly. Whereas Sam, like I think that's like it that's like one of like the strongest like best things about you is that you just like admit what you want all the time. Mm. Does that make sense at all? Do you feel like you do that? I I mean, I guess I don't really like have an explanation. I think I, I was Lynn, I was going to ask the same follow up. I w and then I was going to ask you when this has like uh, been a part of your career. I, I guess I, I think I've like had, um, obviously like ups and downs like I've had injury and I've had like times when I wanted to be on the national team at the beginning and like wasn't getting called in um but I just think like I always just want to like double down on myself and I think like even if I do fail if I do everything at least I'll know I did everything and that's kind of the way I've always looked at it um because it's like I don't want to like hide from it I guess I want to just like face it and go for it but I like I think in other areas of my life totally it's hard to admit, I think, about other things, what you, exactly what you want, because that like fear of not being good enough is like definitely there. Yeah, I feel like it's like a coping mechanism a little bit. Yeah. Because like, <clears throat> excuse me, if if you don't admit it, and then say it do it never happens, and then if you look back on your life, you could say, oh well, like I could have potentially made it to the Olympics, yeah. but we'll never know because I never tried my best. And so it's like yeah. a, this weird. It sounds like so backwards, but it's like a weird like protection of, of I don't, I kind of tried, yeah. but like I'll never know because I never tried my hardest. Yeah. Lynn, have you <clears throat> done that explicitly like at a certain oh, yeah. time? Yeah. I feel like recently or, or like when the World Cup roster was happening, I, and I was in the pool, I felt like I was self-sabotaging and um then obviously I, I was off the team and I was like, okay, I got to work hard to get back. And then when the Olympics was happening again and I was getting a lot of starts, I was like doubting myself. And I was like, well, I'm only getting these starts because X, Y, and Z are happening. And then I wouldn't perform very well. And then I recognized that I was like doing the cycle that I did before because like of the stress of making the team. Cause I was like, well, I'll make it easy for them. But really knowing that like, I wanted to be on the team so badly, but I was trying to like cope with the possibility of mm. if it didn't happen. Um, so then obviously it didn't happen, but I felt like my, so that's why I reached out to a sports psychologist. Um, and like from the moment I realized that that was happening to 
the Olympics, like I don't think I would have been prepared to be able to even go in those games if I hadn't talked to her and realized that like I yeah. was I was doing this weird habit of like not believing in myself and not admitting that this is exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, for sure. I think it's just like like exactly what you said. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm We're doing all, an audio, all of us are like audio choking. <laughs> recording, and I have a frog in my throat right at the exact time of day I shouldn't have one. I was just we all say, do. I, I've been like, I've been like trying to swallow it. Same. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have like tea with honey. Like how gross. I'm like, <laughs> like the most serious part where <clears throat> I know. Jeez. <laughs> I was just gonna say, it's exactly what you said, Lynn. It's this like self protection against what could go wrong. Um, so I, I'm sure everybody does it about certain things in certain ways. I think it's like a really like interesting way that people cope with stress and with like challenges. Yeah. It's like really, it's really hard. Like it's so hard to admit what you actually want. But like Sam, I feel like you kept me in check with it. Like you would like tell me and I was like, oh yeah, like I do want that. Like, why can't I just like say it out loud? Like I can't just, like I I never said it before that because I like couldn't, like I couldn't yeah. say it because I didn't want it to not happen. And that was like the scariest part of it all. But then when I like finally admitted it to myself, like I was able to do it. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's crazy. Um, and we've, I think all had moments of, that of like being maybe away from the national team for whatever reason. Um, Christy, the first, my first camp, like you were there already. Um, we've ha obviously all had different times of not being in, but how has this time of your stint with the national team been different than when you were there, when you were out of college and first in the league? Um, I, I felt, I think I obviously, I mean, it had been so long, so I had been, like, playing professional soccer and stuff. Um, so I just, like, knew what it felt like. I felt like a little bit of, like, a wiser player. Like, I felt like I, like, knew who I actually was as a player. Um, whereas in college, you know, I went in and if they needed someone at left back, I played left back. If they needed a midfielder, I played a midfield. Like I didn't really like have a like career identity, I guess you could mm. say. So then I feel like I finally like after kind of being like bopped around, like I was kind of like a utility player for a while. So I feel like being after being bopped around a while, I was just like, I like want to be a midfielder. Like I want to perfect this position and I want to like, like, I feel like this is perfect for me. So I think that finally, like, just having professional experience and, like, playing in the league for so long, having, like, some overseas experiences, I finally, like, knew who I was as a player and, like, what I could bring. So I think that was probably the biggest difference. Um, and, like, another thing, it was just, like, I know I can be here. Like, the hardest part about getting to the national team, I think, is getting there. And then I think once once you get there, like you're like, okay, I I can do this. Like I can play with these girls. Like I feel like I had like a different, like wiser confidence when I went in mm. as like an older player. That's really interesting. Um, <clears throat> I know I feel like as I've gone through the years too in my career, it, there's this balance of having to like really believe in yourself, but continue to like criticize the ways you can get better. Um, and I think it's it can get out of balance so easily where you maybe you could become overconfident and like lose a step or get injured or something happens, or you could become way too critical of yourself and lose confidence and start to think you don't belong. So I've, I have just found that keeping that balance is really important. It sounds like you found that like in the past couple of years. Yeah, for sure. And I, I also like, I don't know if this is like a off podcast question, but like, I also have been meaning to like, I feel like, now that I've like got to the national team, like I've always, I've had this feeling of like, oh, like I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. Like, oh, if I, like, if I score this game, that's great. If I don't, it's okay. Like I, I'm almost was like happy to be there. And now I feel like I finally got there and I'm here. And it's like, I want to like, I don't know if I'm wording this good, but it's almost like I don't have that feeling anymore of like, um, I don't have that feeling anymore of like, oh, I have nothing to lose. Yeah, like, you I'm feel just like gonna... some pressure. Yeah, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. I feel pressure. Like, I feel pressure to, like, be consistent. I feel pressure to, like, stay with the national team. I feel pressure to, like, be the best player on my club team. Like, it's just, like, pressure. 
And it's hard because like I want to, I, I almost like love playing with my back up against the wall and like I don't feel like it's there anymore. And like now I'm trying to like work through like how I can still like be the best player I can be without my back up against the wall. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's I, hard. Yes. Like well, it's yeah, really I, hard. That's why I, I personally think it's, it's one, well, two. I think it's one thing to get there. But if you're there and then you fall out, it's really hard to get back. But it's another thing once you're there to stay there. Like, yeah, it's because <clears throat> at some point you feel like you go in and you're like, I'm going to go into camp. I have nothing to lose. I'm going to show them play balls to the wall, everything. And then once you're there, you're like, I need to continue to improve. I need to show that I belong here every day. I have to be like this consistent player. And then if I have an off day, I have to be mentally okay to like, forget about that and come back again tomorrow and do the same thing or better. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. It's I hard. Three, I feel like <laughs> all three of us are like, um, like we view ourselves as underdogs and like grew up that way. Mm. And I feel like we have to just keep telling ourselves stories. Like we just have to keep viewing ourselves that way and keep like scrapping for what we want. And like, yeah. Other people might not see it that way sometimes, but like we have to just like we're always Rocky in movie one. <laughs> yeah. Always, always. Like we just have to like tell ourselves that all the time and like <laughs> keep that edge kind of. But it's definitely hard, Christy. I know exactly what you mean. Um, this is the last like kind of soccer Olympics question. Way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I got How? really deep there. No, that no, no. It, that was awesome. That was like so great. That was one of the best conversations we've had. Um, how do you talk, how do you tell apart Sam Mewis, Sam Kerr? What was it like being at the Olympics with a, like another high profile athlete that you were like kind of seeing? What was it like? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't seen her in so long. So of course it was like crazy that we were going to be at the Olympics together and like crazy that we were going to be playing each other. Um, and I mean, it was like obviously so cool like that she was there and that we were playing them, but it was also like obviously just with COVID times and stuff like that, there was just like only so much that like, like I couldn't really see her that much. And it was just like, it had been so long already. Like it had been months. Lynn, I feel terrible talking about this with you because. because I know you're like looking off in the distance, like trying not to make (laughs) eye contact. (laughs) I can't look at you, Lynn, because I know your situation is like way worse than mine. Um, But it was just like crazy. And then of course we were like, I was able to see her at the game and um, I was able to see her like at the hotel because our meal rooms were close together so we could like sit and have coffee with each other. But it was just like, it was like a lot. And it was like so hard for me not to just like run up and just like grab her like, cause I hadn't seen her in so long. But I mean, it was crazy. And I think it was like such a cool thing for both of us to experience, Um, but yeah. Um, well, so oh, go ahead, Lynn. Okay. Um, so that's super cool. But what we really want to know is, um, if you guys just do decide to get married and will oh she God. take your last name and will it be Samantha <laughs> May Mewis and Samantha June Mewis and how will you tell them apart? <laughs> we already can't, we already have to call each other Sam Mewis and Sam Oh Kerr. my God. Yeah. It's like. It's actually like harder than I thought it was going to be because like sometimes when people like are when they're talking to me, I'll be like, oh, and Sam said this and they don't know. Like they look at me like this. They like don't know which one I'm talking about sometimes. Like sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But they're like, oh, I thought you were talking about your sister. (laughs) And I was like, no, like it's actually really hard. But I also don't want to be like, oh, and. Like Sam Kerr said, like, you don't want to say like, or like, sometimes I say like Sam, my sister, but like, it's just, it actually is harder. You should should start saying, okay, in May said, and then in June said. (laughs) Oh my God. How crazy is that though? That they, I can't believe that. When she, when she told me her middle name, I was like, you're joking, right? And she was like, no. And I was like, my sister's middle name is June. (laughs) <laughs> it's so funny. Samantha May, Samantha and, May. Sam- Samantha May and Samantha June. Like, how weird is that? It's really funny. Okay, can you give us a quick rundown on your interest in fashion, 
How do you always get P up people DMing you? Yeah, what? <laughs> to give you free stuff and hear me and Lynn are over here. Well, Begging. me because Lynn gets free stuff too. Just waiting around. Like what? But Sam, obviously, I, it's, it's because you're. Don't go. Don't don't go down that route. You're gonna flip out because I, I don't try. Yeah. Tell us about your interest in fashion. People don't want to hear us fight. Yes, they do. Go. I feel like yeah. I feel like. Sometimes I feel stupid saying I have an interest in fashion because like I'm not like a high fashion like person, but I just like, I don't know. I just like, I get like these like weird and I know this is sounds so weird, but like I get these like weird like visions or like I'll see like a clo- a piece of clothing that I'm like, ooh, that could be a really cool picture. So do you buy things? Because you think they're gonna look cool in a picture? But no, I, I mean, I usually like buy stuff just to wear it, but like, I mean, occasionally, yeah. Like, I do buy stuff for a picture. Like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> Sam, um, can you show us the pants? She got these um, fun pants from um, Free People that have, like, a little lightning bolts on the back. <laughs> she, <laughs> would, she would do that. Well, I bought them because they're sick. They have lightning bolts on the butt. Are those bell bottoms? Yeah. Cute. (laughs) Do you hate them? I just like don't know if they're for you. Like, have you tried them on? Yeah, they fit actually good. I look like a rock star. You do? With a rock star butt. Okay, are they high-waisted? Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is my favorite part in the podcast where we just pepper each other with random questions. So Random random okay um christy favorite reality tv show oh. quickly go uh real housewives of new york Ooh. <laughs> okay what's yours is yours better i don't know i'm just gonna like keep it like jersey shore challenge oh, oh. That's so, the that's challenge a is a good one, one. The challenge. MTV, baby. Are you the one? It's all MTV. Jersey uh, Shore, wh- like marathons, though, like just those hit different. Favorite. I can't wait for I can't wait for Christmas where we just rewatch again. All day. Go to coffee order. Um, iced Americana with oat milk. Go to pizza order. Buffalo chicken. Stupid question. Dun- dunks or Air Forces? <sighs> uh, dunks. Favorite thing at Thanksgiving dinner? Apple pie. Oh, yeah. What's your, what's, your le- what's your least favorite thing at Thanksgiving dinner? Butternut squash. Mashed butternut squash. It makes me Same. gag. Ew. Me too. <laughs> Same. We're just scarred. It's, yeah, it's, it's gross. It's um, who would win 1v1 in basketball, you or Sam? Me. Sam? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> she's just, like, she's better than me at, like, literally everything. Sam, I like, either laugh Sam or Sam would be, weak. yeah, like, Sam would be, she could be better, but, like, she just won't be because I'll, like, make her laugh or I'll, like, tell her she's cheating. or Like, I will mentally get at her so she can't win. Yeah, Christy I, was, yeah. Chris, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christy was mean to me all growing up, like she says, to make me mentally tough. But as soon as she's mean to me now, I immediately revert back to like eight year old Sam, who was like so insecure and mentally weak. It's like with her. And then in the outside world, I think I'm like, I'm like pretty like, I can kind of hold my own because she trained me for it. Yeah. Do you think that's like a sister thing? Because like with my sister, anytime we compete, Like, it's either I'm dying laughing or I'm like, I hate you. And like, I get so angry. Like, I can't do it anymore because I'm like, ah, I want to kill you. Yeah. Sam and I get in these like laughing fits where we can't even function. Like we start like our, and Sam's way worse than me, but like we're, we start crying laughing. Like I like, I like peed my pants, like not that long ago. Like it was, it was like so in Japan. Inappro- no, it was. Didn't we pee our pa- It was before Japan. I peed my pants in Hartford. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like peed my pants. What, what was that even about? So, I don't know. You did something weird in the <laughs> elevator, and it like wasn't even funny, but like it was. And then when you started like his- being hysterically, like you were hysterical laughing, then that made me hysterical laugh, and then I like peed my pants. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, I last mean, question. Mimosas or Bloody Mary? Oh, like, it depends on the night before. Oh. 
No, um, probably, hey. I guess probably a, <laughs> probably a mimosa, but like if I need something salty, then a Bloody Mary. Yeah, I feel you on that. I can't really choose, like it has to be like picked on the day. Yeah, I feel you there. Okay. Okay, so we um, have one last section. It's a fan question. Um, don't forget, if you want to send us questions, you can submit them at Just Women's Sport on Twitter. But the silly one is, would you rather burn your tongue every time you eat pizza or never eat pizza again? Burn my tongue every time I eat pizza. Same. 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 Easy. Thank yeah, you, Mercedes. Easy. Okay, Christy, thank you so much for being on. We were so happy to have you. Yes, thank you. So good. Okay, bye. W- wait. Oh, okay. We need oh. we need you to do a chomp. Oh, yeah. A chomp. Good call, Lynn. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. And thank you all so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women Sports. For more great sports content, go to JustWomenSports.com. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis. You've been listening to Snacks. <laughs>